Hey everybody, welcome back to Planet Coaster and welcome back to Aerobats of Arabia. Today I'm teasing you guys with more scenery building and no more coaster building. I know some of you guys have commented in the last episode that I just keep on doing things that are completely off topic, but in my defense, I really want this whole themed area to be coherent and uh, to fit very well with the coasters themselves. So I'm continuously trying to come up with this entire area while I'm also finishing the coaster layouts. So every now and then, that means I'll just be doing things that are seemingly outside of the coasters themselves, but I think are pretty important to this whole themed land. And today's episode is no different. I'm not going to be adding much to the coasters themselves, but this is an area which I think is very important to finishing the overall look of the later stages of the layouts, as well as the front of the station building, uh, because the buildings that I'm going to be working on in this episode, starting off with the building for this carousel over here, are going to finish the square in front of the station building. Um, and so I think it's one of the most important areas in this whole land and one where I'm going to try and combine many different sight lines and some of the most iconic structures to create this one space where hopefully people will have to end up of course because you need to get here to actually enter the rides queue line but at the same time be like oh wow this is really the thematic center point of this whole themed land so it's a it's a pretty high bar i'm setting for myself there i suppose but that's that's the idea of this whole square plus at the same time i'm trying to create an area where these coasters can wind their way into a dark ride section which is going to be the final stage of the layouts and getting out of the dark ride section at the start of the layout was relatively easy because I was able to hide most of that transition from the view of people on the paths. Uh, but for this area, I think it's not going to be that easy because we have these coasters going into a building in full view of this, this square in front of them. And yeah, I'm definitely going to have to work a bit on coming up with a way to make them enter a building that doesn't seem too weird and too out of place and just drags you out of your immersion of the themed land at this point. But starting off, we have the carousel here. And the reason I built this thing was partly because I wanted to have a centerpiece to look at from um, the direction of the waterfront. So when you walk from the waterfront toward this area, we have one straight section of path between some of the buildings. Uh, with also an, an, an archway gallery crossing it. And then in an exactly symmetrical point of view, we have this carousel in the distance. And also, if you come from the other paths, you can see it along with the station building in the distance. So I wanted to make sure it kind of fit in there as well. Um, so all that to say, I would consider this thing a little mini weenie. It's not really the focal point of the whole themed area. That's definitely the station building. Uh, but from some perspectives, it is definitely the focal point or, or trying to work in conjunction with the, the station building. So this is a pretty important building for me. And it's, it's one that's pretty fun to work on as well, I have to say. Uh, because for this carousel, I wanted to come up with something that fit into the Mamluk style architecture of Egypt that I've been working on in the last episode. Uh, but at the same time, uh, not make it too big or grandiose and still keep an open feeling. And so I was kind of browsing through all kinds of buildings in Egypt and the region to, to see what kind of architecture would work for a flat ride like this. Uh, speaking of which, I ended up choosing the carousel because it's one of the few flat rides with a small footprint. Most of the, most of the flat rides in this game just end up having such a huge footprint that it wouldn't be doable to place it anywhere near this area or it would just end up way too huge but uh, this thing is small enough I think to fit into a, a nice pavilion. Um, so yeah I was looking for a while uh, for what kind of buildings would fit for this purpose and eventually I ended up with uh, this design that's kind of inspired by um, what I believe is called a sabil. I'm not sure how accurate my pronunciation is there but a uh, water dispensing fountain, uh, which typically have some kind of pavilion design. Uh, you can find them in the Ottoman Empire and, well, countries that are previously the Ottoman Empire, uh, but also in Mamluk style architecture. And um, in Egypt, you can 
commonly find them, as far as I can see, in the inner courtyards of many mosques, uh, where they have a large courtyard surrounded by different arches and also one of these pavilions. So, um, yeah, that's the kind of architecture I figured would work out very well for this purpose. And from an in-game building perspective, it's pretty easy and fun to do as well, but it results in a pretty cool looking building because you can just use the dome technique, the age old technique, which in this case is especially handy, I think, because I'm making use of double pillars behind all of these arches. So I don't have to worry too much about these pillars exactly matching up because usually the challenge with the dome technique is making sure that your building is not just exactly in the middle of whatever you're trying to create a dome or a round pavilion shaped building around uh, but also making sure that once you rotate that thing around everything matches up so you could very well imagine that with this kind of arch building um, once you start copying those things around uh, you might realize that your last section is only the length of half an arch and then the whole thing falls apart you know everything has to fit together perfectly um, but that's something that you can kind of test along the way and it's extra easy if you have two pillars like this because you don't have to worry uh, too much about the last uh, parts that you rotate around that kind of have to connect everything together uh, that they won't match up in some way. So all things considered, it's a, it's a pretty fun endeavor. And then we get to the actually slightly more challenging part, which is the roof here, where I do want to try and make as smooth a roof as possible. And thankfully, I have the rest of the building to guide me, so whenever you do a pavilion like this, whenever you build something like this, I would generally recommend, uh, because this building has hard edges, uh, to do the building itself first and then do the roof, because in this case I could use the building as a guideline, uh, start off from the corners of the walls and the arches and use that to shape out the roof and make sure that it actually um, fits, and then you just rotate it around and uh, make sure it's all good and just continuously do that rotation trick along the way to see whether you're you're still on the right track because if you start adding detailing and then you do the dome technique and you rotate the thing around and it turns out that things aren't exactly matching uh, then you're kind of screwed and it's a lot harder to re well recover from your mistakes at that point um, and then for the top of this building I'm actually going the, the very easy route and just plopping down uh, TMTK dome here and that should more or less finish it off and then we just have one last section to do. Also something to notice is that I shifted the height of the stucco plates on the roof a little bit and changed the colors of some of the plates a little bit. As you can see, especially from some perspectives with certain kinds of lighting, uh, you can see that you have lots of stucco pieces in there, all of which aren't exactly the same color and which don't have the exact uh, same placement. So that helps the roof feel uh, a little bit more natural as well, I feel. And also it prevents uh, Z fighting every now and then if you have some textures that are clipping into each other. Uh, but generally with the TMTK stucco pieces uh, from Hydro, I believe they are, uh, you don't have to worry too much about Z fighting because the texture is just that simple uh, but especially if you use some bigger textures or textures with more variety uh, you have to be very careful of not clipping different pieces into each other oh and what's also worth mentioning and i just realized i didn't mention yet um, but specifically this pavilion is inspired by the pavilion in the mosque madrasa uh, which is uh, not the complete name of that thing, but honestly, I'm not going to even try to pronounce the whole thing of it. But it's a mosque in Cairo, and that's about all you need to know from me. You know, sometimes I have to realize I'm also, you know, uh, not equipped to talk about certain things. I'm just a guy who plays theme park games for fun, and, you know, not an architectural expert, and definitely not an expert on pronouncing Arabian names. Get off my case. Anyway, um, one thing that was going to be a little bit more challenging for this building is making the exit and the entrance paths, especially because this building is raised. It is something that I think is a good addition to this whole area because it means that there's finally some elevation differences. One thing that I was kind of worrying about with this whole area is that everything felt quite flat and you don't get a lot of depth in your themed area if you don't have at least some elevation differences. And those elevation differences don't have to come from terrain only. You know, of course you can build your parks on a flat terrain, 
but it's always good, I think, if you have certain pathways that go up and down buildings or hillsides or something like that to add some depth to an area. So this building is basically fulfilling that function for this area. Um, but that does mean that, of course, this is Planet Coaster and it's going to be a little bit more difficult to do pathworks when everything isn't completely straight and when you don't want everything to look like uh, its in-game uh, default counterpart. So here I wanted to build a staircase and kind of hide the in-game pieces away with lots of large brick pieces from TMTK, which I think works out quite well, especially with the sandstone colors. It just manages to fit in with the rest of the building because it manages to use mostly the same kind of pieces. Um, but it is a lot of very specific <laughs> block placements at this point uh, to try and make everything fit together. So it's definitely something to think about if you want to try these kinds of things. Um, something that this actually reminds me of, um, I had already recorded this episode uh, prior to uploading the last one, so it's not something that changed my direction in this episode. Uh, but on the last video there was a comment uh, from somebody called The Doctor uh, about making accessible rooftop areas and buildings, and uh, I think that would actually be a really good idea and a bit of a missed opportunity for this themed area to add more depth to uh, this, this whole land and actually allow people to also see the area from different perspectives. In hindsight, I've been feeling like I missed the boat on creating an interesting queue. I think what, I, what would have been a very interesting queue line for this ride is to make it go up roofs of buildings and have some bridges and archways, uh, crossing paths and just snaking its way through the city. Unfortunately, that's something that I don't see myself fitting into this area anymore, especially now that all of the buildings already have their functions. We have the coasters going through this area. We have a food court in some of the buildings in the future. We have this ride in this building, so it's not really going to work out anymore. Um, but in the future, and maybe if this park continues, if it manages not to fry my computer already with this, this first themed land, you know, I'm just gonna keep dropping very subtle hints that this might become something bigger, but I'm definitely promising that because that's a, that's a very, very big if and when it's possible. Um, but if that does happen, I definitely want to try out something like that and I'm not sure where and how that could fit in um, but something that I've been thinking about is that queue lines are sometimes good sometimes bad but almost always hidden from view and you know almost always have very little interaction with the rest of the park and I think there are some exceptions to that rule very few though I think one of them is the queue line for fly in Fantasia land which isn't always the best queue line because some parts are a little bit messy, uh, but it snakes its way throughout the themed area that it's in, and um, you can see it also from some of the main pathways. And in a sense, it is a strategy to hide your queue line from view because it makes people feel less iffy about entering the queue line, uh, because something that will make you feel horrible at a theme park is looking at a long, long queue and then deciding that you have to join it. For some reason, I'm pretty sure the human psyche uh, likes that less than not knowing what you're in for and then standing in a queue for an hour. But at the same time, I do feel it's a very missed opportunity to not have more interaction between a queue line and its themed land. Uh, because even if I'm thinking about good queue lines, I'm thinking about the Flying Dutchman in uh, the Efteling, or I'm thinking about 2000 uh, leaks under the sea in uh, Tokyo Disneyland, or especially, I should say, uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth in Tokyo Disneyland. Now these are very well themed queues and they're very good at what they do, but they're still very much hidden. So I'm, I'm still kind of playing in my head with the idea of making a themed queue that makes its way through a themed area, kind of in a sense that they almost do in Fantasia Land, um, but make it a bit more designed into the area. But at the same time, find that that balance of not making it look horrible for people who are outside of the queue line. We'll see in the future. Also, speaking of queues, I managed to talk about queues for a few minutes and not even mention the queue that I was building in the meantime, and now the moment's already gone. Um, but I just built a small queue for the carousel, which is also going to be its own little theming area for that area of the park, because it'll just have some foliage around it and some rock work and uh, 
it's going to add some much needed greenery, I think, to this whole area because there are so many buildings with grey brownish colours in this area and the same goes for the pathworks, which makes sense, I think, considering the theme. Uh, but I really wanted to add some parts also where I could add more greenery uh, because, you know, on these kinds of uh, large plazas and buildings, the only way to do that is through planters and small uh, bushes here and there. Um, but I wanted to have an area which was a little bit more green, so the carousel helps me to add that as well, uh, which I think also uh, fits very well with the building that I'm going to be working on in a few minutes. So over here, I am finishing off the side of the station and this is basically using pieces that I kind of stole from the station building itself but at the same time, they're a little bit different so hopefully they fit in well enough uh, to not make for a jarring transition uh, but at the same time, it's not completely the same. It's also inspired by the central square in Isfahan in Iran uh, which also has a bunch of beautiful mosques and palaces, but connecting those mosques and palaces is a huge, completely rectangular wall of uh, these pointed arches. And um, I thought that was a really cool look to kind of imitate here. So for me, it's just one corner and not a complete rectangular square uh, because I'm still trying to fit this into my themed land. Um, but I think it, it kind of works to connect the mosque to um, the dark right building because obviously this wall of arches is also built to hide the dark right building and uh, we're also going to have to do some kind of transition to the architecture of the mosque station building uh, to the part where the two coasters enter uh, the dark right section which is coming up here and at the same time I'm trying my hardest to make it look like a row of different buildings, but as it as is very much the case in many theme parks, it is just a single building. So trying to make as many differences in color and height and architectural styles along this row of facades as possible, but in reality I'm just trying to hide one big grey box uh, from, uh, from the view of the park and we're definitely going to have to have some huge backstage area behind this as well. I'm definitely going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with that roof structure. Uh, but those are worries for some later dates. I think for now I'm uh, very content and just focusing on the theming of it. Now the last thing to mention about this building in the corner is that at some point in the future it's going to have to house the exit path with a gift shop and a photo booth. Not entirely sure how that's going to work out but um, it's uh, my plan. I'm trying to house as many things like not just the ride itself but also the queue line and, and everything else under one roof over here because realistically that's what a theme park like this would do to conserve their space. Now moving on to uh, another facade in this row of buildings. This is going to be my solution for the entry into the dark ride section for these coasters and it's a, a little bit of an odd one but it's one that I arrived at after a bunch of experimentation with what kind of thing I could build and what kind of thing would realistically make sense for this theme and I ended up finding my inspiration in Chehel Satun Palace which is a palace in Iran uh, and the name translates from Persian to English uh, to 40 columns and the joke behind that name, well, I guess it's not really a joke, but basically what the name comes from is the fact that it's this palace with this, this interesting architecture with uh, 20 large, tall wooden pillars uh, that actually stand quite far apart from each other and hold up the roof of the building. Um, and in front of the building is a large pool and the building is in the middle of a park, so it has a really nice green surrounding. And then if you look at the building from the other side of the pool, you'll have the reflection of the pillars in the water and you'll see 40 pillars. So I thought that was a funny little backstory, but most importantly, I think the, in the architecture is very interesting and it makes it fit into this area and it makes it kind of fit into uh, what I'm trying to build as an entrance for the dark ride here because I needed uh, something where the pillars stand far away from each other because these coaster these coaster cars are just way too wide to fit into any kind of theming. Uh, but with this kind of architecture, I think it kind of works out. And these pillars, these wooden pillars, had this very particular style to them. Um, and I'm trying to emulate that a little bit with these here, uh, just using some small blocks to make the capitals for these. 
and I was experimenting a bit with dressing it up with some foliage as well because I am trying to hide a little bit how simple this building really is. Uh, but I also dragged, I, yeah, I, I also got some of the, the Egyptian Mamluk influences into this building as well. So the, the stone is very similar in color to the pavilion next to it uh, to try and make that uh, transition from the Persian architecture on one side and the Egyptian Mamluk style architecture on the other side, which are wildly different things, of course, but I'm trying to at least provide a little bit of a, a separation between them and uh, trying to stick to my theme for this whole land of uh, transitioning from one theme to the other very quickly and in very small areas, uh, but at the same time trying to find, yeah, trying to figure out how those transitions can actually work. Which reminds me of a genius comment on my last video by Matt Milbrand, which was to use colors uh, to represent different areas and themes within the themed land. Uh, so for example, I could use uh, a lot of red or purple as a, a highlight color in many of the buildings in the Egyptian area, and then use green to theme many of the buildings in the Persian area. And then the color could uh, somehow communicate that there are these differences within one themed land that is generally a thousand and one nights inspired basically which i thought was a really cool idea i'm not sure if and how i can fit it into this area uh, but it's definitely something that i want to remember and maybe could toy with at some point in the future because it could make things a little bit more recognizable uh, because one thing that i am a little bit concerned about uh, people who are interested in architecture and are listening to my ramblings about different kinds of architecture that inspired me uh, on different buildings, they can look at these and recognize that they are coming from different parts of the world. But uh, somebody with no architectural knowledge coming into this park just for a fun day with the family might not see that kind of difference. And I think it would be interesting to figure out how to make it a little bit more obvious uh, while still you know, not making the transitions too jarring between different areas. And I think working with highlight colors and making that somehow recognizable uh, would be a really cool way to experiment with that. So I'm definitely keeping it in mind, uh, but it's something where I'm not sure how exactly it's going to work out. Um, and also in the meantime, I started work on the minarets, which I wanted to place next to the carousel building, which kind of makes it look like a, a mini mosque of sorts. I just figured that I needed something with a little bit more height next to this building uh, to counteract the, the visual weight of the giant dome and minarets on the other side of the square and also make this really a, a finishing uh, center point on this side of the area. Um, so I decided to build a Mamluk inspired minaret and this is one that is very much inspired by just all the minarets that you can find in Cairo. Not a particular one, uh, but it has the style of basically all of them, uh, as they typically consist of three tiers that are separated by balconies, and each tier will have its own distinct style and often even shape, uh, which is quite different from minarets, for example, in Ottoman architecture. So in this case, I started off with a square base with a large square balcony uh, supported by lots of detailing, uh, and then we go into this round tower base uh, where I still put some of the same detailing and the same kind of balcony uh, But obviously everything has a, a different shape and then uh, finally we're going to move over to the top where we have the final balcony as well as a little spire roof structure uh, that should finish the whole minaret and That brings me to my last thing that I kind of wanted to talk about in this video, which is a little bit of a different topic um, uh, a good friend of mine, Menno, left some uh, constructive criticism on my Discord, which I haven't replied yet on the Discord, but I definitely uh, read and took to heart, and it kind of made me uh, reflect on a lot of things, uh, because he had some very good points uh, to point out about the last episode, one of which was that the archway to the food court could use some improvements, uh, that is the archway to the food court next to the Moroccan building, uh, but also the large archway, archway to the food court uh, on this side of the square, next to the, the Egyptian building with the, the red dome, uh, because both of them aren't really fitting in with the style of the rest of this area. Um, especially the one next to the Moroccan building makes the transition a little bit jarring. 
and also the lettering is is honestly pretty bad uh, and I definitely agree I could do better on that front uh, that said um, he also commented about how the Egyptian building with the red dome in a sense I, I feel like what he was trying to say is that it feels a little bit orientalist uh, which I think is very fair uh, it's definitely a kind of European inspired dome and one that you wouldn't really find uh, in Egyptian architecture um, but I think it's also an interesting thing to have a conversation about because uh, even if you go into Cairo a lot of the downtown area was designed in the late 19th century under French occupation so there's a lot of colonial influences in many Egyptian buildings and architecture in general is something of a, a conversation between different cultures the architecture of minarets specifically was inspired by church towers and it started leading its own life in Islamic architecture but really no architectural style exists in a vacuum and many of them implement things from each other and take inspiration from different cultures which I think is what makes architecture very interesting and especially in a theme park setting I think uh, at least for me at least it's a lot of fun to just play around with different styles and try to mix and match and make things a little bit eclectic so I'm honestly pretty happy with keeping it eclectic like that but there are some things that could definitely be improved on different areas and while I'm not going to focus on those inside certain episodes and I'm not going to film it because I think it takes a lot of moving around an area and seeing what kind of incremental changes you can make I'm definitely going back to some of my older areas and seeing what things small things I can improve like adding little details or changing colors of certain parts and I think it takes time and reflection and talking with other people to realize those kinds of things so all that to say I'm trying my best to balance criticism with my personal opinion because you know everything's subjective after all what looks good to one person might not look good to another uh, but also my own motivation to work on this stuff and the time that I have to work on it uh, to actually finish this build uh, as 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 goodly as possible i couldn't come up with a different word so while i really appreciate all of the constructive criticism and all of the comments that everybody leaves on my videos it is something that i might not always do something with but that doesn't mean that i don't appreciate it because i am very happy with all the comments that i get but especially the comments that point out something that i didn't do right or try to correct me on something or just give general general tips and tricks on uh, stuff that I can improve so by all means keep the comments coming uh, I love them and uh, I read them all even if I might not respond to them all anyway that's it for this episode I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next one